JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's weekly market outlook webinar for the week uh, starting today until August the 14th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will uh, jump into our analysis. Okay, this week it's the turn of the RBNZ to decide on monetary policy. Um, we also get the UK GDP for the second quarter, Sweden CPI is for July, the US CPI is for July, uh, and also the Australian employment report for uh, the same month. But uh, let's start, uh, uh, let's dig, dig into the details and start uh, with today's releases. Okay, today the calendar is uh, relatively empty with the only releases worth mentioning being China's CPI and PPI for July and Norway's inflation data for the same month, both of which are already out. China's CPI rebounded 0.6% uh, year-over-year after sliding 0.1%, beating estimates of a 0.4% rebound. The nation's PPI rate increased to minus 2.4% year-over-year from minus 3%. With regards to the Norwegian data, the headline CPI rate ticked down to 1.3% year-over-year from 1.4%, but the core one rose to 3.5% year-over-year from 3.1%, beating estimates of a slide to 3%. At its latest gathering, the Norges Bank kept interest rates unchanged at 0%, repeating that they will stay at that level for some time ahead. Officials appear somewhat more optimistic than previously, saying that uh, since the prior meeting activity has picked up faster than expected, the employment has fallen more than anticipated, and oil prices have risen. Oil prices are now slightly higher than they were back then, while the unemployment rate for June declined to 4.3% from 4.6%. Thus, with uh, core inflation accelerating in July, Norges Bank policymakers may feel comfortable staying on the sidelines for a while more and reiterating their sanguine language. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asia morning, we have uh, Australia's NAB business survey for July. This release is not a major market mover, but given the emphasis of the RBA to the labor market, we would like to take a close look to the labor costs uh, index, which rebounded 0.1% uh, quarter over quarter in June from minus 0.9% quarter over quarter in May. What may be more important for Aussie traders, uh, Maybe the wage, uh, the wage price index for the second quarter and the employment data for July due out to be released on Wednesday and Thursday, respectively. That said, uh, this currency has been mostly linked to developments surrounding the broader market sentiment in the last months, and thus we expect the aforementioned releases to only result in intraday fluctuations uh, rather than uh, trend and determinant movements. Now, during the European morning, the UK employment report for June is uh, due to be released. The unemployment rate is forecast to have risen to 4.2% from 3.9%, while average weekly earnings, including bonuses, are expected to have declined 1.2% year over year after sliding 0.3% in May. The excluding bonuses rate is also expected to have fallen to minus 0.1% year over year from plus 0.7%. The case for a weak report is supported by the KPMG and REC UK reports on jobs for the month of uh, June, in which it was noted that starting pay for both permanent and short-term staff fell further in during the month as demand for workers remained weak and labor supply continued to increase. Now, from Germany, we get the ZW survey for August. The current conditions index is expected to have increased to minus 68 point uh, 68.8 68 from uh, minus 80.9 
but the economic sentiment one is anticipated to have slipped to 58 from 59.3. This suggests that analysts' opinions with regards to the current performance of the German economy have improved following the agreement between Eurozone's members over a, over, over a coronavirus-related rescue fund, but fears over a second wave of infections in Europe may have raised questions with regards to the future. The euro skyrocketed in the aftermath of uh, the deal over the rescue package, but another round of accelerating, infect accelerating infections may be the trigger for a decent downside correction. Now, later in the day, we get uh, Canada's housing starts uh, for July and the US PPI is for the same month. Canada's housing starts are forecast to have slowed somewhat, while the US uh, PPI headline rate is forecast to have ticked up to minus 0.7% year over year from minus 0.8%. The core rate is expected to have rebounded to 0.1% year over year from minus 0.3%. Now on Wednesday, during the Asian morning, the spotlight is likely to fall on the RBNZ monetary policy decision. At its previous gathering, the RBNZ decided to keep interest rates uh, and its large-scale uh, asset purchase program unchanged, with officials noting uh, that their nation has contained the spread of the virus, enabling an earlier resumption of uh, economic activity than assumed in May. However, they highlighted that the appreciation of their local currency has placed further pressure on exports and that the balance of economic risks remains to the downside, adding that they remain willing to ease their policy further if deemed uh, necessary. Now, in the second quarter, inflation slowed in New Zealand to 1.5% year over year from 2.5%, but this is still higher than the bank's own forecast for the quarter, which uh, was at 1.3% year over year. Thus, this may allow RBNZ officials to stand pat for another meeting, but with the QE slightly higher against the dollar than it was the last time they met, we also expect them to reiterate concerns over its appreciation, as well as their readiness to ease further if needed. Now, from Australia, we get uh, the wage price index for the second quarter. Wages in Australia are expected to have slowed to 0.3% quarter over quarter from 0.5% something that will uh, bring the year-over-year -year rate down to 1.9% from 2.1%. Uh, that said, bearing in mind that the quarter-over-quarter -quarter trade of the NAB lab or costs index has risen to plus 0.1% quarter-over-quarter in June from minus 0.8% in March, we would consider the risks surrounding the wage price index as tilted to the upside. Ahead of the EU Open, we have the first estimate of the UK GDP for the second quarter, as well as the industrial and manufacturing production rates for June. Economic activity in the UK is anticipated to have tumbled 20.9% uh, quarter over quarter in the three months uh, to June, which following the 20.4% uh, month over month tumble in April alone is unlikely to come as a surprise. Both the industrial production and manufacturing production month-over-month -month rates are expected to have risen to, to 9.4% and 10% from 6 and 8.4% respectively, something that will drive the year-over-year -year rates up to minus 13.1% and minus 15% from minus 20 and minus 22.8%. Now, at uh, last week's gathering, the Bank of England kept its policy unchanged, and although it highlighted that the economic outlook remains uncertain, it upgraded its GDP forecast for this year, but with the condition that uh, the direct impact of the pandemic on uh, the economy will dissipate gradually over the forecast period. In its quarterly monetary policy report, officials discussed the effectiveness of negative interest rates and noted that they will continue to monitor their appropriateness. That said, we don't expect a round of bad economic data this week to increase speculation that the bank could adopt negative rates soon. After all, officials uh, kept policy uh, officials kept uh, their policy unchanged uh, last week after noting that economic activity is likely to fall more than 20% in the second quarter and that the unemployment rate is projected to rise materially by the end of the year. We prefer to pay more attention to data regarding the third quarter before we start examining whether officials will consider negative rates at some point in the foreseeable future. Now, from Sweden, we have the CPIs for July. 
both the CPI and CPIF rates are expected to have declined to 0.5 and 0.4% year-over-year respectively after both sitting at 0.7% year-over-year in June. That said, as it is always the case, we prefer to pay more attention to the core CPIF metric, which excludes the volatile items of energy. That rate stood at 1.3% in, uh, in June. At its uh, latest gathering, the Riksbank decided to extend its framework for its asset purchases from, uh, from 300 billion SEC to 500 billion SEC up to the end of June 2021 while it announced that in September it will start uh, purchasing corporate bonds. The board also decided to cut interest rates and extend maturities on lending uh, to banks, despite keeping the repo rate unchanged at 0%. We believe that a potential slowdown in core inflation is unlikely to prompt additional action, by, uh, additional action at the bank's upcoming gathering, but it may keep officials willing to do so if the situation continues to worsen. From the Eurozone, we get industrial production data for June. Expectations are for a small slowdown to 10% month over month from 12.4%. Uh, However, this would still be a decent monthly rate as it would drive the year over year rate up to minus 11.6% from minus 20.9%. Later in the day, the US CPIs for July are coming out. The headline rate is anticipated to have increased to 0.8% year over year from 0.6% while the core one is anticipated to have held steady at 1.2%. Although this could lessen somewhat the probability for the Fed to expand its stimulative efforts, all the attention in the US is likely to stay on whether the Congress can eventually reach consensus on a coronavirus aid package. Discussions fell apart on Friday, uh, something that prompted President Trump to sign executive orders and uh, memorandums aimed uh, at unemployment and benefits, evictions, student loans, and payroll taxes. However, details on how the measures could be funded remain unclear, and Democrats have already warned that such orders are legally dubious and may be challenged in court. In any case, on Sunday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said uh, they are open to restarting talks. Tensions between the US and China have also escalated, with Trump unveiling sweeping uh, bans on Chinese tech firms TikTok and uh, Tencent. Up until now, risk sentiment remained broadly immune to those developments, but it remains to be seen whether this will be the case this week as well. If so, a potential accord in the U.S. Congress may prove positive for investors' morale, pushing equities further up and safe havens down. On Thursday, the highlight may be Australia's employment report for July due out uh, during the Asian morning. The unemployment rate is forecast to have risen to 7.8% from 7.4%, while the net, change in, the net change in employment is anticipated to show that the economy has added 40,000 jobs after gaining 210.8 thousands in June. At the last week's gathering, the RBA kept its uh, targets for the cash rate and the yield on uh, three-year government bonds unchanged at 0.25%, noting that the bank's uh, mid-March uh, package of support is working as expected. What's more, officials noted that even though the worst of, of uh, this contraction has now passed, the outlook remains highly uncertain and that the recovery will be dependent on the containment of the virus. With the bank also noting that in its baseline scenario, the unemployment rate is likely to rise to around 10% later this year. We don't expect the rise to 7.8% to come as a surprise to policymakers. Thus, we don't expect this report to prove a game changer with regards to the RBA's plans. Even if the odds slide somewhat on a weaker report, we would treat such a slide as a corrective move on the currency's overall uptrend. As we already noted, we expect the odds to stay mostly linked to developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. And if the risk on trading continues, its uptrend is likely to continue as well, especially against uh, safe havens, uh, against safe haven currencies like the dollar and the yen. As for the rest of Thursday's data, Germany's final CPI is for July and the US initial jobless claims for last week are coming out. 
As it is always the case, Germany's final CPIs are expected to confirm their preliminary estimate, their pre preliminary estimates, while the U.S. initial jobless claims are forecast to have slowed slightly to 1.14 uh, millions from 1.196 uh, millions the week before. Finally, on Friday, in Asia, China's industrial production, fixed asset investment, and retail sales, or for July, are due to be released. Industrial production is forecast to have slowed somewhat to 4.7% year-over-year from 4.8%, while fixed asset investment is forecast uh, to have fallen 3.3% year-over-year after sliding 3.1% in June. Retail sales are anticipated to have rebounded 0.3% after falling 1.8%. During the European morning, Eurozone's employment change and the second estimate of the bloc's GDP, both for the second quarter, are coming out. No forecast is available for the employment change, while the second GDP estimate is expected to confirm the initial forecast of minus 12.1% quarter over quarter. Later, from the US, we get retail sales for July, industrial production for the same month, and the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for August. Both headline and core sales are forecast to have slowed to 1.8 um, and 1.6 percent month over month, from 7.5 and 7.3 percent respectively. While industrial production is anticipated to have slowed to 3 percent uh, month over month, from 7.2 percent. The University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index is expected to have declined fractionally to 72 from 72.5. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, a couple of Mondays ago. We don't have, we will not have uh, a weekly market outlook webinar next Monday. So uh, we'll see you again on the 20. Uh, we'll have a weekly market outlook webinar on the 24th of uh, August. Now, if you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT time. So, goodbye, have a great uh, day and a greater week. JFT, just fair and direct.